Hey, welcome back. I'm Adam. I'm Brett. And we are the, the Wall Twins. Twins. And today, once again, we're cooking. We cook and then we eat, actually. I'm excited for today's cook specifically because I finally get to do, for the first time for me, make wings on the Blackstone. Brett has done this before. He's perfected this. Amazing, <laughs> absolutely amazing. You're thinking, wait, you have to fry wings or bake them. Yeah, you can, but you don't have to. You can actually do them on the Blackstone. They come up crispy, just as crispy as any other cookie you could do, and absolutely amazing. So we're gonna show you our simple recipe that we do. We're gonna throw these birds onto the Blackstone. If that sounds like something you would like to see our take on these amazing chicken wings, then stick around while we dig, dig in. in. I can't believe the Wall Twins. They're right there. That's I one know. of them. That's the That's other one. one. I'm the other one. Like we said, welcome back. However, if this is your first time here, consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you never miss a cook with the Wall Twins. We'd love to have you along for the ride, and this is something we absolutely love to do. But Brett, tell us what we're doing with the wings today, my man. All right, so we have a ton of wings here, which Adam dressed up very nicely. Uh, I normally don't cook this much because in my household, there's only three of us, but for Adam and his family, we're going big. So, and we're then gonna, we're going home. We're gonna go, <laughs> we say we go big and, and we go, go home. home. So that's what we're gonna do here. So we're just gonna put uh, the seasons on there. We always call them the usual suspects. Salt, pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and adobo. And, and we threw in some accent, accent as well mm -hmm. uh, to pull out a little more flavor. So we're gonna dress this on. It's gonna make it a nice, in fact, you can eat these wings by themselves after they're absolutely delicious, but we're gonna have a line of sauces that we're gonna show you the different sauces that go with the wings that we absolutely love. I kind of can't wait just to see what these are gonna taste like after. So we're just gonna sprinkle this sprinkle up in here. Up, yep. So all we're gonna do is just sprinkle this in. This is quite a bit. It. We'll mix those around and then we'll sprinkle more in. So I got went ahead and we tossed all of this in there. Uh, this wasn't a direct measurement. If I was doing measurements, you're looking at adding about two teaspoons, uh, one to two teaspoons of pepper. This is about four teaspoons of salt, adobo, and accent each respectfully. Same with the, the garlic and the onion. We use about Powder. two to three two to three teaspoons. So Brett's got a good mix on those. Those are coated. While he's doing that, let's go ahead and fire up the grill. Yep. So once we got that fired up, one more time with this, like so many of the other cooks, we do what we call low and slow. So for today's cook, we will be using the thermometer to test to make sure we don't uh, undercook. And also, hands are clean. Handy dandy tongs. Brett, I just checked them, they're working. Let's see. Yep, those are good. <laughs> gotta give them the click check. Who doesn't love a good pair of tongs? I wanna do these 170, even 175, the reason, and, and maybe even higher. The reason for that is because, you know, the bare minimum that they that the FDA suggests is 165. Chicken is one thing that we never want to mess with. We never want to get close. This isn't one like a steak where you're like, man, pull that thing right off the cow. I'm ready to eat it. Right. Um, chicken, you got to be careful with, as you probably know. So we just want to make sure that we're not anywhere close to that. So 170, if they're 165, then we know we've reached the limit. We can start pulling them off because they'll continue to cook just a little bit longer when we've got that powder crisp on yep. that on the uh, on the either way bro absolutely delicious so this uh this black stone is about ready to toss the yeah i feel on, that heat so. coming off there all right so right we're good we're gonna go ahead and start tossing these uh these birds on oh, the oh, end oh, we'll oh, go ahead oh, and oh, spread oh. that around real quick yes sir can't think of anything i'd like to do more more than anything in my whole entire life go ahead right down here. on the top to bottom oh yeah you do want it in your heat zone don't you yeah we're cooking right okay. in the heat zone here just start try my best to start with the skin side down on these flappers. Feeling down one at a time. Yep. These are beautiful, man. Perfect. Listen to that sizzle. The crowd is going wild <laughs> up in here. Up in here, up in here. Now this is only one unique way to cook it. I have the air fryer combo at some point. I will oh, do boy. a video of cooking these in the air fryer. We just wanted to show how you can actually cook these on a flat top. Once you get this going, we want to flip these about every two minutes. Is that right, Brett? Yeah, about every two minutes you want to keep it uh, cooking. One thing I love about the Blackstone, or griddle cooking for that matter, is that you are constantly actively cooking. So you're, you're, you're moving, you're flipping, you're, you're sliding, you're grooving, whatever it is. You're constantly doing something which I really enjoy. Forgot we got a whole bunch of wings. Let's turn on one more zone here. 
right. Now there's no reason I couldn't turn on all four burners, but I am trying to conserve some of the propane. So we started with two, I realized we have more wings, so we went ahead and turned on that third burner to give us a better, uh, more cooking area, because heck, why not? Because we can. This thing is up to make it hotter. Got a little water in there just to steam up, get those a little bit hot and give it another minute and then we'll go ahead and flip them. All right, well, I wanna make sure we're not burned up. Oh, oh you smell that goodness? Mm-hmm. Man. Oh yeah, you're a good call, man. <laughs> Starting good with the hot call. zone, get some of those turned. So this is gonna be a busy cook. <laughs> it is. be flipping as needed. You want you to take over and okay. do some flipping. See how we got here, okay? We still just need another minute. All right. So we got some of our cool zone. We've got uh, some of the hot zone here. We're taking advantage of that. At some point, we might move some of these out and some in, depending on what's cooking quick and what is not. So uh, yeah, we'll give this a second here. Man, even those, Brett, those are starting to really turn. There we go. And Adam, I'm telling you, these things are so crispy, dude. It's yeah, freaking amazing. I cannot wait. Go ahead and take a look. Some are probably ready to flip. Yep. Let's look at the ones that we put first. Okay, yeah, those are just about ready. Yep. Okay, flip them on where they're not flipped yet. And then so after another flip, maybe after this flip or so, we're gonna start checking the temperature. Again, internal internal temperature, we need at least 165. Yep. What I normally do is I'll go to the fattest piece of chicken and use that as my tester. Obviously, thinner ones are gonna cook quicker, but I use that kind of as the gauge to start realizing when they're about done. One thing that I really like, I have the 22. Uh, it's very portable. Um, I actually have a nice camping table that I put it on. It's collapsible. It has a bunch of table space, lots of space for holding like my water bottle and my oil. And the cool thing is, is I live in a college town, so there's lots of tailgates go on during the football season, when football season comes back. And I can uh, take that, throw that up, and I can do these wings for my tailgate party. It's absolutely awesome. I can also throw on some beer broth, some um, hot dog burgers, make it nice and easy. Some smash burgers for a tailgate, it's absolutely awesome. So that's why I love my 22. But I like this cookie surface, because it's huge. It's great for a big family like Adam has. Okay, so here's the fattest one right here. Is that coming up, bro? About 135, and at 135, let's check the smaller one. Yeah, that's about 160. Just oh, about, no, 161. It went to 161. You gotta leave it in for another minute. So yeah, so I'm gonna check this one. Okay, about 152. Actually. Went all the way down and touched the <laughs> 400 degrees. What okay. the? This one is done. Okay, so we got our first one done. All right, Brett, go ahead and pull those out. Pull that one out real quick. I've got my cooling rack that I love to have. One of the accessories that I've actually come to love because it's just become so versatile. Sometimes I'll lay tin foil down on top of that if I'm making burgers. Throw the burgers on there so that way I don't lose any of the juices or anything down. It keeps everything warm without getting cooked still. So for these, it looks like it's gonna be perfect. Uh, 170.6, the full length. So like I said, we're getting these over the 165 recommended. We're cooking these at 170 to 175. Uh, we're okay with that. We got a good crisp on the outside. It's gonna seal in those juices. They're coming out golden brown and they're gonna be delicious. GBD. <laughs> golden brown delicious. This is a lot of active flipping. This has me super excited. I'm doing wings next time I have a party at my house. You're invited, let's do this thing. This is actually really fun. The smell of this while I'm cooking gets me so excited. The fact that they're getting that golden crisp on the outside, man, I, I gotta tell you, this is, <laughs> this is so awesome. So, we brought those together. We steam these up, bring the heat up just a little bit. We're gonna do this about 20, 30 seconds. Really just trap that heat in there with that steam to help cook it on the outside without having to burn it on top of the griddle. So we'll do this, we'll move them around. I'll bet we got most of them ready to go at this mm -hmm. point. Smell the steam. So 
some of the smaller drums are done, all the flappers are done. So right now we're just getting these last few drums and then we'll be good to go. So something that Brett has learned since being here cooking with me, I love to clean up my griddle. Looks like I'm gonna have a fun project cleaning up this one. <laughs> Last one finally to 170. Wings are done. You kidding me? Look at those wings. Man, would you look at that? We had to grab some of the sauces as well that we're gonna try. Brett's got some buffalo wing sauce here. Start with Frank's buffalo sauce. Two tablespoons of butter. Two tablespoons of butter. We started with one, it was still a little hot, tossed in another tablespoon. Uh, the more mild you want, the more butter you put in. So, and then about a clove and a half to two cloves of garlic pressed it and it is amazing. And, and that sauce. is the Kikoman sweet and sour sauce. It is sweet and savory at the same <laughs> time. But we're gonna try these wings first without dressing any of the other sauces. Brett, grab your grab your wing. We I discussed this one right here on we the are top. both we are both fans of the flappers. Yep. I'm excited about that, man. Brett, it's like I always say, this can look amazing, which it does. It can smell amazing, which it definitely does. But if this doesn't taste amazing, then this was all, all for, for not. Cheers, I'll eat to that, my brother. Mm. Oh my word. Oh you. my word. I told you. Bro, you almost don't even need sauce. You almost don't need <laughs> sauce? You don't need sauce on these wings. That is so juicy, okay? Those cook to perfection. They are still juice on the inside. We got a little sear on the outside, and those flavors, what we call the usual suspects, came together perfectly. I don't know that I would ever do wings another way. I know, I mm. know. Mm. This is the only way I do wings. Oh my word. Okay, well, I intend to take one bite, and then use the sauce for my second bite. I had to finish that whole thing off. Now for the sauce though, I'm gonna use a drum to get more so of some of that sauce in there. So I'm gonna grab one of the little drums here. You grab whatever you want there. Sweet and sour. Now with both of these, we're doing ranch. Yep. Okay. No, no, no ranch on the first one. Okay. Cause I actually, I actually like doing a, um, like a teriyaki sauce, uh -huh. which is really good teriyaki and ranch. Mm -hmm. Crazy combination, but it works. It's absolutely delicious. So with this, right. I actually don't use the ranch with this one. I don't care. Stop talking. Let's eat. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, my brother. Mm. Oh, wow. I was wondering how that wing could get better. This adds a little sweetness, and yep. this has some savoriness Savory, in it yep, already. A little bit of a salty Excellent. Flavor. Okay, well, I'm using the same wing. Excellent, excellent sauce. Now, let's try to taste Brett's uh, homemade, homemade wing sauce here. Let's see if this is any good. No. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's so suspect. <laughs> See if this is any good. Now, normally he uses one tablespoon of butter. We added a second tablespoon to mellow it out. So this is more of a mild rather than a super hot, yep. which is better for our my family's palate. All right. So this we will by itself. I usually do this and then ranch. All right. We got the ranch for us for after. Mmm. Oh my God. Wow. I can taste the butteriness. Tell me. Oh, you would wow. order that at a restaurant. Mm, absolutely. This this is like it's a hot garlic. Night. You can taste the garlic that you you uh, pressed in there. Mm-hmm. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You wait. Nope. Nope. I mean, come on. Get a little bit of that, dude. That that spice is perfect. It's I perfect. still taste the heat coming down afterwards. Your face oh man. Out. I'm not sucking through my my air through my navel here. One more bite here. Mm. No. Well, well, there it is. There it is. There it is, okay. There's a lot of hate for people putting their chicken wings on the Blackstone. I don't understand that at all. Me I've got the Blackstone, I've got it here. Um, I can get chicken anytime. This was super easy, it was super cheap, and this was actually a lot of fun to cook, and those seasonings go so well together. These are, honestly, some of the best wings I've ever had. Yep. And I'm not just saying that because we cooked them up. <laughs> you gotta try this out for your own. Hopefully this helped you. If you did, make sure and give this a big thumbs up. If it didn't, and you're still one of those people who is wondering why in the world would you cook wings on the on the Blackstone, we totally understand. Hit the dislike button two times for us because we are with you on that. 
Thank you so much for taking the time to watch us cook on the griddle again, something we absolutely love to do. But Brett, aside from just coming and cooking these delectable wings on the Blackstone griddle, why else are we doing this? Because all we do is twin, no, no matter, matter what. what. And with that, we bid you adieu. And adult. Forget, Forget to, to like and subscribe. Griddle on.